We think women need to talk more openly about money because money really matters. It shouldn't be embarrassing or confusing. Join the conversation. We'll be discussing a whole range of topics which will help you get comfortable with your finances. Money Matters, brought to you by AJ Bell. Hello and welcome to another Money Matters podcast. I'm joined as ever by my partner in crime, personal finance guru, Laura Souter. Hi, Laura. Hi there. And yes, can you believe it's one year of the Money Matters campaign, which means one year we've been doing these podcasts. If you have been listening for a year, thank you. If you're a regular listener, then you might have noticed that we switched things up a bit with our pods and our first New Look episode got a lot of great feedback on Instagram. A lot of love for our first guest, Heidi, the Duchess of Thrift. Yeah, she went down a storm on Instagram. So one follower called The Elegant Engineer said her interview showed honesty and authenticity, while another said she was guilty of the same online shopping mistakes and also thanked Heidi for being so honest in her confession. If you don't already follow us on Instagram, then definitely check us out. We are at AJ Bell Money Matters and we'd also love to hear from you. I love the new confessional, I have to say. It's an absolute (laughs) highlight for me. And um, if you do check us out on Instagram, Rachel, our social media guru, is also putting together a series of reels with clips of some of our favourite podcast episodes. Because with a lot of the content that we've put together, we are really hoping that we can create some evergreen stuff, a space where women, including you and I, Laura, can really talk openly about finance, our mistakes, our triumphs, and also a whole load of hacks that might be useful to you, your family, your friends, whatever stage in life you are at. And we've got some awesome guests coming up, if we do say so ourselves. We've got acclaimed money expert and author, Laura Waitley. And we've also got Instagram favourite, The Scummy Mummies. Yeah, they were absolutely hilarious. I can't wait for you to hear that episode. And they're on tour at the moment. Um, They also have a podcast, so do take a listen. It'll give you sort of an idea of what is coming up. But this week brings Black Friday. Do you shop Black Friday, Laura? So I do sometimes, and I definitely have been known to get sucked into deals in the past where I probably didn't need to spend money. So I'm trying to show extra control this year. (laughs) I similarly am trying to show control or at least I'm trying to persuade my kids to show a degree of control because it does come with a whole load of pitfalls opportunities yes but also you know you see something and you think hang on a couple of months ago I'm sure it was cheaper than that and it was just raised in order to be able to bring the price down but you know, finding a deal at the moment in amongst all of that noise is pretty important. So I have been chatting to the irrepressible Karen Hasid, the mum behind the brilliant Instagram account, Kaka's Head Over Deals. But before we hear from Karen, who I have to say also has a brilliant confessional for this week that you should stay tuned for at the end. Um, But right now we're going to cover the kind of more serious bit because Danny and I are going to go through what happened in the autumn statement last week and try and help you understand what it might mean for you. So this is part of our new feature, which is the one thing you need to know about this week. And clearly what the government has decided to do with taxes and energy bills and all other things that are going to affect the money in your bank account is hugely important. Yeah, I mean, I I was struck by some of the headlines which came up after the autumn statement and and the fact that, you know, living standards are going to fall by a huge amount. I mean, I think we're wiping out about eight years of growth in terms of the living standards that we've achieved over the last eight years. And I think we're all feeling it. Um, And I know lots of people were in touch after September's mini budget because it caused some serious chaos on money markets. So, of course, the new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, was brought in to turn things around. He reversed billions of pounds worth of tax cuts. And in this latest statement, he went even further. And it it was quite difficult to listen to um, because it was incredibly sombre and downbeat. But I think for most people, Laura, it's got to be the extension on the freeze on tax thresholds that will make the biggest dent. So let's start by explaining what the heck they are. I know, because it just sounds so technical straight away. And I think so many people just then switch off at that. But it is so important. So 
basically everyone can earn an amount of money before they have to start paying tax. And that's called the personal allowance. And then everyone can earn a certain amount of money before the higher rate of tax. So that's 40 percent income tax kicks in. So usually these kind of thresholds, these amounts increase with inflation each year, which means that each year you can earn a little bit more money before you have to start paying tax or before you have to start paying 40% tax. And it's a way to make sure that when you get that little pay rise each year to kind of keep up with inflation and rising prices, you're not being taxed more on that money. What is the change then that was announced this time? Because I, I know a lot of people are incredibly worried that they're effectively going to be taxed more. Yeah, so the government had already frozen those thresholds. They said we're not going to increase it by inflation each year. But it's now extended that freeze until the 2027-28 tax year. So basically until April 2028. Um, And it means that as wages rise, so as you get a pay rise or maybe you move to a new job and you get a, a decent chunky pay rise, more of it will be taxed than would have been if the thresholds had risen as normal as I laid out before. So I did some number crunching because I think it's always useful to know how much is this actually going to cost me. Um, Someone on the average wage of £33,000, it will cost them just over £2,500 more in tax over the next five years. So that's the total cost. That's not per year. The thing is, it's quite sneaky because it's not something you're going to notice immediately in your pay packet. It's not like from next month you're going to say, well, my take home pay is lower and I'm, I'm now handing over more to the tax man. But it's something that gradually, as your wage increases, you'll gradually be taxed more than you would have been if they hadn't made this move. So it's a little bit of a sneaky one. And we're also talking um, following the... Uh, mini budget about the 45p tax rate. So this is the higher rate and the threshold the government has said is going to be brought down so that people start paying that higher rate earlier. Yeah, exactly. So at the moment, you hit the highest rate of tax, which is 45%. You hit that once you earn £150,000 or more. So it only affects quite a small proportion of the population. Um, The government has now reduced that threshold down to £125,140, a very obscure number, which there was a very technical reason behind that I won't delve into because I think I'll send everyone to sleep. But essentially, it means that if you earn just over £125,000, you'll now pay that 45% tax rate. And if you earn more than that threshold, then you will be paying more tax because more of your income is going to be taxed at 45% rather than 40%. So it's going to cost someone who earns about £150,000 a moment, it will cost them an extra £1,200 a year in tax. I still wouldn't mind earning £150,000, but uh, <laughs> I don't think For lots that's... of people that will seem like a nice problem to have, won't it? But yes. <laughs> it, it might well do, um, particularly, of course, for people who really rely on benefits and pensions. And one of the things that did come out of the autumn statement, there have been huge amounts of speculation as to whether pensions and benefits would rise with September's inflation level, which is 10.1%, or whether the government would choose to go maybe with earnings, which would be an increase of about 5.5%. Um, so um, we've all seen how inflation takes a chunk out of our money. So you can just imagine the difference that that would have made to people. But Jeremy Hunt did say, no, we are going to go with the 10.1% increase. So just to give you sort of cash terms, what that would mean. So for an average family receiving universal credit, that's about an extra £600 a year And for the state pension, that's an extra £870 a year, which is a big chunk of extra cash. But when you consider that inflation has already topped 11%, then I think, you know, in real terms, people are still really going to be struggling. Yeah, and it's probably also worth flagging that child benefit is going to be increased by that amount. So lots of people out there who might not consider themselves to be kind of on benefits, they might not be on universal credit, but they are claiming child benefit. They'll benefit from that same increase as well. And then the other big thing that we were waiting for news on that got delivered last week was about energy bills, which the Chancellor had 
quite a lot to say about it. Um, and at least we've now got clarity, but it's not necessarily all good news, is it, Danny? It's not all good news um, because although the price freeze, it's not really a cap because if it was a cap, it would be substantially higher until the government got involved. So that price freeze, which has had our average energy bills frozen at £2,500 over a year, that is going to be less generous come April. So we're going to be paying £3,000 a year for an average bill. Now, it does still provide some sort of a cushion because the latest numbers that uh, Cornwall Insights um, have given suggest that otherwise an average bill would be over £3,700 a year. But I must stress again, this is only an average bill. And if your household uses more energy than average, and I'm afraid mine definitely seems to fall into that category, then you will pay substantially more but it is something of a cushion. Now, it's less of a cushion than you think it might be because at the moment, as well as the cap of 2,500, we're also getting an extra 400 pounds of energy support and we're getting that 66, 67 pounds a month. So that's not going to continue on. However, for people who get those cost of living payments, £650 this year, people on benefits, which have been spread over two payments, that cost of living support will continue. And actually, it's going to be more generous. So in total, £900. Um, There's also additional money, um, again, for pension households and people on disability benefits. And there's also more money for the household support fund, which is something that councils dish out to people if they're in real trouble. So I think what we've said all the way through this, Laura, is that if you're worried at all about your energy bill, make sure that you are getting all the help and support that you possibly can. Talk to Citizens Advice, talk to the council and talk to your energy provider. There is help available. They are obliged to help you. But whatever you do, don't just stop paying because that then can get you in all sorts of trouble. And it's sort of a hole then that you've got to dig your way out of. Exactly. I mean, the government never liked to make it easy with all of those different ratios and rates changing. It's a little bit tricky, isn't it? um, It is tricky. Yeah, definitely. And I just thought I'd also mention before we move on that um, people on housing benefit, that is still frozen at 2020 levels. So um, although we were talking about other benefits going up, pensions, child benefit, Um, and universal credit, housing benefit is still frozen. So that might be something which impacts you. And so then the final bit of the autumn statement was on the so-called wealth taxes. So this is dividend tax and capital gains tax. It only affects people who have a decent amount of investments outside of an ISA or a pension, or people who are self-employed and pay themselves via dividends. So the limit that you can earn tax-free for both of those taxes is being slashed. So for dividend tax, it's going to go from £2,000 a year at the moment to £1,000 in April, and then only £500 in April 2024 before you have to pay that tax. And for capital gains tax, it's being cut from £12,300 at the moment down to £6,000 next April and then £3,000 in 2024. So if those affect you, definitely do some more research or speak to your accountant if you're self-employed to get advice on how to try and beat those tax cuts and mitigate the hit as much as possible. Because there are tax wrappers when we always talk about this, you know, things like ISAs and pensions, they're a really good way of trying to deal with that additional tax which people have to pay. And as you say, it's really important if you're in that situation to get advice if you possibly can. Um, Just generally, though, we chatted after the mini budget, and and I don't think I've ever experienced a budget quite like that one in terms of the the tax giveaways that just kept coming and coming. And it it was only weeks. I think it's really important to say it's literally weeks between that mini budget when we had all these tax giveaways and this autumn statement where we've gone completely the other way. And 
we had an update from the Office for Budget Responsibility, which is something that markets were jumping up and down um, following the mini budgets. And we just need to know how you're going to pay for all of this, what the debt's looking like, what the economy is looking like. And it just didn't make for great listening. And I think I was really struck by, as I say, the tone of it all. And it, it really feels like we're sort of stepping back towards a really difficult period of time. And I, I remember um, austerity and talking to people in the middle of all that and how hard people found it. Now, this autumn statement didn't go that far. In fact, there was still additional money for things like the NHS, uh, infrastructure projects have been given the go ahead, but still it was downbeat. Yeah, it feels almost impossible to think that this is the same political party and government um, behind these decisions as the same kind of massive tax giveaways. Obviously, you know, the prime minister's changed, the chancellor's changed, but it's still the same party um, behind two very different budgets. Um, but what we do know is that people are going to be worse off than they were a year ago and living standards are set to fall further. So the Office for Budget Responsibility that you mentioned there, which is a kind of government's independent forecaster and data cruncher, reckons that we're in for the biggest fall in living standards on record and that household incomes, once we take into account inflation, so those rising prices, are going to fall by 7% in the next few years, which makes for slightly downbeat reading. Yeah, and making your money stretch as far as it possibly can has always been important. But I think right now it's it's taken on a different hue. And I know that we're talking shopping again, but it's the overwhelming thing on many people's minds at the moment. Certainly the, the mums that um, I've been arranging Christmas parties with um, over the last few days, that is the thing that they've been talking about, how to make sure that they can give their kids the kind of Christmas they're after, but not get into some serious debt. And lots of people will be thinking about Black Friday and those promotions are absolutely everywhere. So I have been getting some tips, how to identify a deal, how to avoid the scammers, how to take advantage of every voucher and every offer out there from Karen Hasid, the Mancunian mum behind the Instagram account, Kaka's head over deals, and here is what she had to say. So, Karen, I suppose for people that that don't know you, that haven't seen your posts on Instagram, who who are you? Who am I? Well, I like to describe myself as just your average mum of two, juggling jobs, juggling work, juggling money, as we all are in this busy, hectic world. Um, and yes, you know, I am bamboozled by, I love fashion and uh, all the nice things in life, but um, obviously cost comes into a factor and it's about making my hard-earned cash work harder. And um, yeah, I started a journey years ago of searching and googling for offers and deals I mean I can go on and on for hours but I know you've only got me for, for 10 minutes and you want Black Friday so by George have I got Black Friday for you um but yeah so it's just about um I decided to share what I'm doing um with people and Kaka's head over deals I mean we all know the connotations with Karen May uh, I promise you I'm a nice Karen. Um, and then I get in trouble for saying I'm a nice Karen. But um, yeah, I decided to share it and Kaka's Head Over Deals uh, was born. I, my daughter's called me a Karen the other day. Oh, <laughs> I refuse to go to the Karen restaurant. If you want food thrown at you, you can come here for free. So that's your first money saving um little thing there come here I'll throw food at you for free for <laughs> <Karen's diner. laughs> so yeah I mean it, it is Black Friday that's why we're talking to you um and I know this year more than any year people are really thinking hard about their money Correct. they're thinking hard about the offers that are out there and they're worried that some of these offers are too good to be true or that they're going to get ripped off. So how do people know when they're getting a good deal? Well, first, 
first of all, it's all about preparation. So um, I think the number one golden rule is, and we, we all know it, only buy what you need. You know, they say, I mean, my, my job from years ago as a sales girl, but sales girls are the easiest people to sell to. So I've had to train myself. You only buy what you need. Um, that's the first thing. And use sites like price tracker sites to check other stores. And I'm sure you'll, you've all seen, you know, they say it's a great deal and you go on. But actually, two weeks ago, it was at a cheaper price and they've bumped it up and they've given you the discount. So you've got to know your stuff. You've got to do your research. That's that's the very, very first thing I'd say. So clearly there are deals out there. So if you've, you've done your research, yeah. what other ways can people save money at Black Friday? Okay, well, I can completely go off a, um, a, a complete wrong U-turn here. Um, for me, I mean, you've got your cashback site, so that's that, that's one of the things. For me, I am a complete addict for collecting air miles, but not through a credit card, purely by their internet site with Virgin. That's from Manchester being up north. I collect the Virgin points. You can gain air miles whilst shopping without a credit card so for example if i was to buy something say from argos um they will offer me every pound i spend um 10 miles per pound um so slowly but surely that kind of collects up and i get to go and visit my family in america for just the price of the tax. Um, so that's one way. But as I said earlier, if, if you're not collecting air miles, I mean, travel has got so expensive. Um, and it's all about, you know, bringing back money into the house whilst buying, you know, you've got your kind of uh, quid co, et cetera, that you can get your money back um, on items. That's, that's what I would say for sure. Absolutely and, for sure. And you're an absolute boss when it comes to vouchers. Oh, I am the voucher queen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for for me personally, I'm going off again. Sorry, um, but I like to look at. Um, I like to eat out. I mean, you know, we've had enough cooking through the pandemic and enough takeaways and all the rest <laughs> of it, takeaways. Um, I love vouchers. For example, the here in Manchester, there's something called Manchester Confidential, and they do fantastic vouchers in restaurants where you, you buy a voucher for 50 pounds and you get a hundred pounds spend or 25 for 50 so you'll often find me eating out and dining out in fabulous restaurants um i've just been to one recently in a hotel called brooklyn um and it even included wine my husband doesn't drink so it's marvelous he drives <laughs> home um and yeah we spent 50 pounds i had a fillet steak and everything you can imagine three courses with a glass of wine and it didn't cost us a penny so there's vouchers galore absolutely to be so where, had You've where do you got... find them oh i don't sleep um so <laughs> i spend most of my time googling researching new places opening um again i'm going off here but uh one of my favorite ever deals is if i'm going somewhere on a holiday um, I don't often book packages. I like to book it myself. So I always Google new hotels opening. And as I said, I have family in America. And I found a hotel in Los Angeles, which should have been something ridiculous, like $500 a night. I mean, I'm a premiering kind of girl, you know. And there was an offer on April Fool's Day. So this is no fool. It was $50 a night. So we got two nights for $100 uh, for a family of four. So always research and Google, travel, especially now Black Friday, the hotels will be offering deals for perhaps summer, Easter holidays. You know, it's it, there's no problem planning ahead. And, and more often than not, you can pay when you're checking out anyway. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a really ace tip. So people obviously really scared of scam emails, scam offers. Oh, aren't we all? Yes, absolutely. 
So what Just, advice would you give? I mean, I think, to be honest, we're all in the same boat. You know, we're all very, very conscious. I've just done another Google re-verify, verify and verify. Um, I'm not that technologically savvy, but it's it's just be careful if you're unsure about a store, a small independent, um, give them a call. I've just done that recently. Um, another brilliant tip for Black Friday is that look at the smaller independent companies, go follow them on social media. And more often than not, they will be starting earlier as well. They'll be getting your juices going, you know. So start following the people, the stores, the small independent firms. And it's lovely to shop small as well, as we all know. Um, so that that's another huge tip that I would certainly give. Oh, here's one more for you. You know, when you kind of, it's all systems go, you know, you might have waited up till midnight for whatever sale it is. And then you, you're in your basket and you're like, my goodness, I, I need to get that present for Christmas and what have you. Uh, log in, make accounts and log in prior to your shopping. So you're not being held up at checkout. And the other good thing about this, perhaps if you've not used a company before or maybe a larger company or even a smaller one, they more often than not will offer you um, an opening 10% offer. So you could be getting an additional discount as well. It's tough at the moment trying to make sure that you've got everything particularly if you've got kids pestering you all the time yes. and particularly if they're on social media and and they're seeing all of these things and i know that you often have your friends talking to you about that yeah absolutely. so how how do you go about bridging the gap between what's attainable and what's not um how with regards to getting hold of the product or for, for the price that they're asking? A bit of both. <laughs> a bit of both. All right, I'll just say one word to you. So any any mums out there will know the word prime. Um, it's a drink <laughs> from America. The kids have gone crazy. Um, I have to say my son is following in my footsteps. Um, but he's had my, um, my husband queuing up in Asda at six in the morning to get hold of the stuff. But he's been selling it. <laughs> he's been selling it for double. I'm really sorry to all the mums from school if you've got caught by my son. Um, no, listen, you, you have to explain to your children. You, you know, you see all these things on social media. and there is, There's only so much we can do. Um, I personally wouldn't be paying over the odds. I mean, the Ninja Air Fryer. Please, will someone give me a break and find me one in Aldi? I was there at five to eight on Sunday morning. Um, you know, I'm absolutely, we, I, we all have high cholesterol in our family. So I do like to try and cook as low fat as possible. And it does sound like the Holy Grail, uh, but I will refuse. I am com completely refusing to pay over the odds. I've just seen now, I've just been on someone said they've had a restart, they've had a restart. Um, yeah, I more than likely will be seeing an Audi on the 16th of November. I shouldn't have shared that if this goes out uh, before then. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you just you just try your luck, really, and, and see what you can do. Some of this is quite time consuming. Very much so. But we're a 24 hour society. <laughs> so there's no rest for the wicked, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, I, I work for, actually uh, for a pharmaceutical company in the day. Um, in their credit control, believe it or not. Um, and this was, um, yes, my sideline. I'm making, as I said, trying to make money um, work better for us. And in fact, here's my, my heat pack. Uh, no heating is on at the moment. It's all good. Um, but yeah, I just like to share the kind of offers and deals. And, you know, I love a good Jeep. You know, I, recently I've just shared now about Aldi. I mean, they are killing it right now. Their makeup's like as good as Charlotte Tilsbury. They're bringing out an air fryer, which is half the price of the Ninja one. The reviews are awesome. So, yeah, it's just getting hold of them. But uh, if you persist, you know, we will try. <laughs> is that your top tip then for people? Persistence. Persistence, yeah. And um, 
you know, have a look at, out of your local area for, for pickups. I've actually just noticed an air fryer. Um, where was it? In Nottingham. Am I that desperate to get one? Probably, but I don't have time to go to Nottingham. <laughs> Maybe I'll send the husband. <laughs> Look, it's been lovely to talk to you. If people want to follow and get your tips, where can they find you? Absolutely. Welcome on board. As I say, I'm a completely normal person, normal mummy, driven mad. Um, it's Cackers, because Karen doesn't, it just doesn't stick for me. Cackers Head Over Deals. And Danny, thank you for having me. I've got so much more to say. Let's do it again. <laughs> Karen Hasid there, who is better known as Kaka's Head Over Deals on Instagram, talking to Danny. Now, Danny, Black Friday, do you have things that you want to buy? Do you think that you might get sucked into buying some deals? What's How do you handle it? Last year, I needed to get both my kids' iPads. That was the thing on their wish list. And I must admit, I was watching... Um, like a hawk all the different deals and I did buy on Black Friday or at least I got my sister to buy on Black Friday because she was over in the States and they had much better deals there than we did on uh, electronics certainly where she was in Florida so I took advantage in that way this year we're doing things really differently because the kids want things like uh, one of them wants to go to a comic-con convention so I'm, I'm looking for for vouchers for things like that but I do want a water flosser which sounds really really <laughs> middle class and old-fashioned but that's what I want so I've set my husband the task of getting a water flosser for the least possible amount how about you <laughs> I think I can beat that for boring in the pre Black <laughs> Friday sales. I bought some nappies that were on offer. So that's my deal of the year. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, I think if there's a thing that you want to buy for a Christmas present or you want someone to buy you for Christmas or that you've had your eye on for a while, then Black Friday sales are a great time to try and get a bargain. Um, but just try not to get sucked into things. And I think my one top tip that I would have to maximize those discounts is to use cashback websites. So I use these, I don't always remember, but I do use them wherever I remember, particularly when I'm buying more expensive items. Now they'll also have Black Friday deals on. So it could mean that you can double up, you know, you can get a bargain, but then also get a bit, bit of cash back off on it and probably a bit more cash back than you'd usually get because they have some, you know, Black Friday offers of extra cash back. So I think that's a good tip to try and maximise those savings. You see, this is why I didn't put you and Karen together in a room, because I think between the two of you, that chat would have probably gone on for a good hour because she's all over that whole cashback thing. <laughs> she has admitted, though, that she doesn't always get things right. Um, even a seasoned deal hunter can get caught out by changes to the small print. Are you ready for her confession, Laura? I am. I love these. Yes, I'm ready. Here we go. Okay, I'll just say one word to you. Brexit. <laughs> and, um, you know, as a lover of fashion, I do love, by the way, I do love my Depop Vinton and all the rest of it. Let me get onto the confession. Um, yeah, buying from abroad. It's not what it was, should we say now, because of the import tax coming in and that dress that you thought that was going to be cheaper and you really can't send it back. It is hideous on and it ended up costing me more. So that is my confession. I am exceptionally careful now to read if the import tax has been included within the price for shipping to the UK. <laughs> so how much extra did it cost you? It was, it was a good few quid, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it was nice. It wasn't even very nice, but hey-ho. Thank goodness for Vinted. <laughs> Soon flip it. 
So that's good. I think as ever, it's good to hear from people that are really savvy, really switched on where they sometimes get it wrong as well. And customs charges are my constant headache at the moment because I've got family who lives in Germany and just trying to get birthday presents out to people or Christmas presents is a nightmare with customs now. So I really empathize with her. Yeah, we... um we're just doing sort of sending money over to my brother-in-law for my sister's birthday, just because trying to get stuff to her, not only is the delivery charge bonkers, but then yeah, custom charges, you can get completely caught out where you buy something which is, you know, really cheap because I'm a cheap sister and then you send it and then you realize that you're spending double treble on customs and delivery charges, which is just, yeah, not ideal. No. But that's it for this week's pod. We hope you're enjoying the new format and we hope that you are finding Money Matters Pod and the campaign useful. I think we should have had cake to celebrate our first birthday. We need more cake on this podcast. I think we should have cake, definitely. Um, I have made pumpkin buns. So I do have a bun. Oh, nice. Where's mine? Um, do get in touch with us uh, on Instagram at AJ Bell Money Matters, or you can email us money matters at ajbell.co.uk. And you can find our back catalogue on our Money Matters webpage, along with a whole host of useful articles covering topics like asking for a pay rise and what cost of living support you might be entitled to. So go to ajbell.co.uk forward slash money matters. And you'll also be able to sign up to the newsletter there so you don't miss any of the content that we produce. Yeah, and you'll notice I didn't reply to Laura's answer question, uh, where's my bun? But there we go. (laughs) I'm keeping them all. Thanks so much for listening. Tell your friends, leave us a review and all that lovely stuff. Bye-bye. Before you go, please remember this podcast is for educational purposes and the views expressed don't necessarily reflect those of AJ Bell. The podcast isn't telling you whether certain investments are suitable or not. And don't forget that the value of investments can change and you can lose money as well as make it. It's also important to remember that tax rules apply and that the way an investment performed in the past may not be the same as how it behaves in the future. If you want help, go see a qualified financial advisor.